Hello there, Mr Green here with your construction learning video for the objective Can I outline and explain the different types of work that take place in the construction industry? So if you think of construction, are you aware of all the different types? So a quick reminder, you can either save and complete the worksheet on your computer, print and complete the worksheet by hand or copy the questions onto paper. Either way, it doesn't matter. The worksheet for this topic is available for you on Google Classroom. And the important part is that you complete the work as best you can and send it to me so I can give you some feedback. As always, we're going to use our tools, pen, pencil or the computer to complete the work. Your knowledge nuggets, which is where you'll get the information from to begin with, to complete the chart on the first section. And as always, the six W's questioning sheet, really, really important part of these videos is encouraging you to develop your questioning when you're looking at construction. So if you're looking at an image, start to question what's been used, why a certain technique has been used, how have certain materials been put together. Really important part is questioning the images and trying to understand why things are the way they are. So with those tools, we are then going to complete the learn section together, where you'll copy the knowledge across. You're going to complete the apply section, and then I'll give you some of my answers. And then at the end, an embed section where you'll independently have a go at asking, answering sorry, the questions um, that we've put together. So here we go. The first type of work is new build. So new build, this is where buildings are constructed from scratch, from foundations and services to the final roof tile. So it could be a domestic building, so a home, it could be an office block, any type of construction that starts from scratch, so from the foundations up, is a new build. Next, maintenance. So any type of building needs looking after in the same way that we should be looking after ourselves. Buildings need looking after. The maintenance is a process of keeping something in good condition. So, for example, annual maintenance to a central heating boiler like we have in this picture here. Or it could be as simple as oiling, applying oil to door hinges. Looking after buildings, massively important part of extending the building's lifetime. Next, repair. So repair is something that is really important. A lot of people try to repair their buildings. They don't really know what they're doing and they can make them worse. And there are certain repairs that have to be completed by qualified tradespeople. So in this particular example here, we've got a gas engineer working on a boiler. And in this example next to it, we've got somebody that's fallen through a roof. So two very different repairs but both things that need to be completed in order to look after a property. So to repair is to restore something damaged, faulty or worn, back to a good condition. So for example, repeating, replacing the pointing in a brick wall that has suffered frost damage. And on the left hand side here, you've got all sorts of different examples of where repair to a building may be required. On the right hand side, I thought I'd just put that picture in because I found it quite shocking that they're supporting the building with huge sticks. This is an example of where a building is beyond repair, I would suggest. So refurbishment is the next one. Now, a, a very um, uh, recognisable example of refurbishment is here with Grenfell Tower. So this is Grenfell Tower before the refurbishment. This is Grenfell Tower after the refurbishment. You could say that there were two main reasons for the refurbishment. First one, as you can see, the aesthetics. So what the building looks like. And secondly, to improve the heat retention of the building. So improve the insulation. So that's Grenfell Tower before and after the refurbishment. On the right hand side, you've got refurbishment, uh, the same building, the same room before and after the refurbishment. So to modernise and redecorate a building, 
For example, the premises have been completely refurbished in our corporate style. So if a company has just bought a building, they want to make that building their own and they will change the building so it reflects the business style. That's refurbishment. Next, we have adaption. So on the left hand side here, here we have a tradesperson installing shields in an office uh, to prepare the office for workers returning during the coronavirus pandemic. So the office has been adapted to make the working environment safe. On the right hand side, we've got adaption where the building has been adapted to allow for exit and entry of disabled people. And down the bottom, we have a wet room. So where the room has been adapted to um, allow disabled people to look after themselves. Finally, demolition. So demolition is normally the lively part. It's the bit that a lot of people get quite excited about. It can take place in different ways. Here we've got quite kind of a, an extreme demolition where people are actually turned up to watch. And here we've got a more controlled demolition uh, with a digger taking the building down. And you can see here the two skips for the different recycling that's going on. Massive part of demolition, especially nowadays, is recycling. So what do we do with the material after the building has been demolished? So to demolish is to pull down a building or structure that is often no longer required or fit for purpose. And as I said, all materials nowadays have to be recycled according to legislation. So that's it, well done. By now you should have copied across the knowledge from your knowledge nuggets onto your new knowledge sheet and completed the table. Having done that, it's really important that we now apply that knowledge to the real world. So get you thinking about the knowledge in the real world in order to answer these questions. I've just put six different questions together and what I'd like you to do is have a look at the questions, pause the video, write down some of your answers and then come back to the video and just compare your answers to the ones that I'm going to go through with you now. Really important that you give yourself time to think and apply your knowledge rather than just writing down my answers. So have a look at the questions, pause the video, write some of your answers first and then come back and see how you got on. So the apply section, possible answers. So after each yellow section that I've read through, please pause the video just so you can copy it down comfortably and have a think about the answer that I've given. So question one, what is the difference between maintenance and repair? And I've put maintenance is the process of keeping an item in good working order. For example, completing an annual boiler service. A repair, however, is required when an item is broken, so needs to be fixed. For example, if the glass in a window is broken, it would need repairing. Question two, why may adaptions be made to buildings? Remember to give an example. So I've put here, adaptions will be made to buildings where the use of the building changes. For example, if a large family moved into a small house, they may wish to extend in order to create more space. Question three, where could repairs be required in your house? And as always, give an example. I've put repairs could be required in many places in your home and in particular in areas of high use or with moving parts. An example, could include taps, windows, doors, and flooring. Question four, when would buildings need refurbishment? As always, give an example. Buildings often require refurbishment after a long period of time, or in the case of a new owner or change of use. An example is where an office space is modernized in order to improve the working environment for workers. Question five, 
how are new builds completed on time and within budget? Now, this is an area that we're going to go on to talk about uh, in more detail in a later video. But we start to talk about the professional trades more. The trades where you may not be in your scruffs, you may be in a shirt and tie. Um, and we're going to start to talk about planners and project managers. So the answer for this question, how are new builds completed on time and within budget? New builds are completed on time and within budget as a result of effective planning and management. Planning ensures that each stage of the project is prepared for and management keeps the project on target and under control. A good example of this is where extra time is built into the plan to allow for bad weather. And like I say, we'll talk more about professional roles as we go on. And that'll be a new video. Last question in this apply section. Who would be required to complete the work below? Maintenance on a heating system would be a plumber. Repair of a fuse box after a fire, that would be an electrician. And adaption of a roof structure for a loft extension. I've put carpenter. And that's the apply section completed. So finally, have a go at completing the embed section. So here I have a picture for you. You can see that the work is um, taking place and I would suggest it's taking place after, possibly quite some time after, the initial building of the property. And have a go at answering these questions. So for example, what trades would be required to complete this project? How can you tell that this project is an adaption. I gave you a bit of a hint to that earlier. And the windows in this extension have already been fitted. Why may this be a bad idea at this stage of the project? So the embed section is really about making you think. Come up with some questions of your own and feel free to answer them or have a go at my questions. But use the questioning sheet and apply the questions what, why, when, where, how, who, to this image, to really get you thinking about what you've learned. So that's it. Can I outline and explain the different types of work? Hopefully, after watching this video and completing the sheet, you'll have a far better idea of the different types of work, and you'll be able to explain how those different types of work operate within construction. As always, any questions, send me an email and thanks for watching. Goodbye.